I'm going to talk specifically about the things that triggered my uh, white adoptive family and like their microaggressions, the things that basically bother me. Um, one was they didn't like when I had a whole hearty laughter that, uh, that had nothing to do with them. You know, it's like a real um, laughter. And they also didn't like when I laughed too loud, basically. And that was weird because that like has uh, historical significance. As uh, if you know anything about Black history and slavery um, uh, in the South, uh, there are things called laughing barrels. Um, black people had to put their head in the barrel and laugh, as to not to offend basically like you know white people. And so I, I, it's interesting. Another thing is, if I'm enjoying like a food too much in their presence. One of the microaggressions is they start talking about this is like something disgusting, or you know. And I, I, I thought maybe it was just a coincidence, but then I started noticing a pattern, you know, of them doing it, basically. So another thing is um, the constant infancy. Um, this part's mostly psychological. For instance, they didn't they didn't think of me as like a sibling on their level they thought of like me as a sibling on their children's level uh, my adopted sister whenever talking to me in the conversation when she would refer to my adoptive mother she would say grandma you know and then she would use the excuse oh she's just used to saying grandma um talking to her daughter about grandma but she would say grandma when having a conversation with me it's psychological um it's just the constant infancy. Um, another thing is money. They could give me money if they give them a mental superiority. Like, it's got to be charity. It, it can't be... Um, they don't, for the most part, they don't support my music. My older adopted brother bought two or three jazz albums in the past, but he never shared it with his friends. He never got his friends to buy any. I think it was just to study it, basically, you know. So they can they can give money as long as it ha they have a kind of as long as there's some emotional strings to it, as long as they they've cleared their their guilt and they can have kind of like a financial superiority with it. If it's something out of ingenuity, like like a business thing, just for me, if something I'm talented, they they won't support it. For instance, I got um some money for making this poem in this coffee magazine. And uh, you think a family like, oh, okay, let's, let's, let's actually buy the magazine. Let's support them. You know, let's buy the magazine and see this poem. No, they just wanted me to show them the poem. And they just didn't it's stuff like that. It's just the constant competition. And, you know, cause and the worst thing, it's like their, their children didn't owe me any respect. Like, like their children, their children would say something offensive basically about, you know, and that I found offensive that would normally be offensive to, you know, us black folk, and they would never check their children for it. They just wouldn't. I just have to take it on the chin. Um, they didn't view me as a sibling on their level. They viewed me as a si sibling on their child's level. Uh, another thing, um, they would work on, they would purposely work on my depression. Uh, for instance, um, they would start talking about how this other cousin of theirs got married or bought a house and stuff like that. And, um, that would be their constant. It'd have to be like a one up and they would just, you know, they would just keep mentioning that, you know, it would never just be a heart to heart conversation. It'd always be like, okay, how could we have a one up on, on Corey? Uh, whether that be just financially or just whatever. So you can never have, you can never just, because two, when two people vibe together, right? They're just vibing together, um, having a conversation. Trying to vibe with them, they're thinking about their next offensive thing to say or their next thing to try and make them seem smarter. That's what they're thinking about. It's, it's never just like a vibe. So that's why I stopped going to them for, for my issues because they're just master gaslighters and they would just gaslight and just deny everything and, that's part of why I just, I'm going no contact. It's too much. A lifetime of that is too much. You need to have people that you can just vibe with and you don't have to 
be a conversational war all the time. Another thing, you're, you're constantly being studied. That's, that's what they did. Um, black people get studied all the time, but you know, like think about living a life like that, where you're just like constantly studied. So nothing's ever organic. That's the point I'm trying to get at. Nothing was ever organic. They were a family on paper and, um, uh, they would do everything performative. If they ever defended me, uh, about racist moments, which was extremely slim it'd be performative. Because, you know, it's part of that resentment and it's how they, they're actually racist. It's how they think. So it's just, it was just too much, too much to, to remember, you know, to hold back your laughter, hold back your art, anything organic that you would do triggered them. So you had to literally be someone else. You literally had to be a people pleaser and just be grateful. That way, that's why the the Sundays I started having suicide ideation. Those those times where I spend those Sundays with them, I'd, I'd go home and be like, I, I don't want to wake up tomorrow. And I finally realized what, what what it was, and that's when I started to stop stop. In my uh, later adult years, I I started to not be around them, and then started to heal, started to isolate. Anything organic about me as a black man, whether it just be an organic laugh or enjoying a food, um, uh, just sitting there vibing on the piano. Oh, if I'm flowing on the piano and I'm really vibing in my God zone, uh, that's organic. They'll come and interrupt me. And I noticed a pattern with that. So anything organic that involves black God zone or melanin, so I'm in my space triggers them. So that's basically what I wanted to say. I wanted to get specific about uh, about just just the non-organic thing. Everything was non-organic. Think about living a life, not having organic grandma, grandpa, mom, dad. A lot of transfers of adoptees end up taking themselves out. And I'm still here. So I'm definitely a strong person. Strong, strong person. But I need that special someone because I need to be organic with that special someone and I need an organic family to where my I can learn to have my organic actions and not feel like I'm I'm triggering someone. I can have a hearty laugh. I can just I can sit in Zen, I can enjoy some food and not have them feel like, Oh, are you enjoying that? Is that your favorite food? Is everything is constant observation? And it's not organic. And so was it really a family or was it a situation? Okay, have a good day.